I have my usual notice to be pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Sturbridge Board of Selectmen will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the town's website at www.sturbridge.gov slash town hyphen administrative slash pages slash how hyphen access hyphen virtual hyphen meeting. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen and or watch the meeting either online via the town's on-demand video broadcast on cable television channel 191 or dial into the meeting at 774-304-1400. Enter one four two and found for the meeting number and one two three four five for the access code. This phone number is only active for the public during public meetings. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post audio and flash or recording, video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceeding on the town's website as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay. On our agenda this evening. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, ma'am. Mary, can I interrupt one second? Yep. Shane? Sure. Okay. Shane, can you mute your microphone, please? Shane? Yeah. Can you, mute, there. can you mute that for me, please, for now? There you go. All right, Matt, Mary, go ahead. Okay. On the agenda, we have Pledge of Allegiance, Public Service Announcement. 635, we have a public hearing logging permit to 87 Brookfield Road. At 7 o'clock, we have another public hearing logging permit, 72 Shattuck Road. Then we have department report, town administrator, water and sewer. Then we have action item, item one considering the lighting at the Little League field. The other is possible acceptance of the donation. Uh, we have a request for concurrence with the appointment for a new police officer and for the emergency management director. We have uh, possible action on the mass interlocal insurance association renewal for insurance. We have consideration and possible action on the setting of the annual town meeting, possible consideration of setting of the annual election consideration and possible action at the on the request of the Special Events Committee. And we have old business COVID update and consideration of possible extension of the current operating procedures, new business, town administrators review, correspondence, approval of minutes, citizens forum, and then the executive session, which we had originally scheduled for 615, but with technical difficulties. Hey, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, of, the United of, America, States of America and to, and to the republic, republic which stands, for which it stands, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with, with liberty justice, and justice for all. For all. You sound more like a chorus. <laughs> okay, public public service announcement. Um, I do have one. Um, this is International Firefighters Day. 
So on behalf of the town, I would like to extend a thanks to the Sturbridge Fire Department for all they do to keep the citizens of Sturbridge and visitors safe. Okay. Priscilla, do you have any announcements? No. Mike? Uh, I just wanted to thank all the, uh, all the uh, nurses and doctors that have been uh, working so hard to, uh, to uh, keep uh, uh, people alive. Can you try to help me? Hey, Mary, do you have any? No. Is Chase there? Don't see him. Uh, no, but I thought Jeff was talking to him. No, nope. No, oh, okay. So it is 635, so we have a public hearing. Hey, Mike, do you have the legal notice? Yes, I do. I just got to get down to that page. Um, Yeah, I think this is it. In accordance with Chapter 132, Section 40 through 46, Board of Selectmen of the Town of Sturbridge will hold the public hearing on the petition of Michael Bartlett for a logging permit for 50 acres of land on 282 Brookfield Road, Sturbridge, Mass, 01566, owned by uh, Jim uh, Current. The hearing will be held on Monday, May 4th, 2020 at 6.35 p.m. at the Sturbridge Town Hall, uh, 308 Main Street, Sturbridge, Mass. The Sturbridge Board of Selectmen elect, consistent with the governor's, uh, Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, to hold a public hearing virtually. Uh, details regarding how to virtually access uh, the meeting can be found at the town website, uh, www.sturbridge.gov, town forward slash town administrator, forward slash pages, first forward slash how access virtual meeting. Okay. Um Andrea, did we get the green cards? Oh, I didn't send the butters letters. Mike Michael Bartlett did and he told me that yes, he's been getting the green cards back. I believe he's on the call. Michael hey, Michael. Michael, unmute your microphone, please. Michael. There you go, Mary. All right. I just got on. Mary, your computer, microphone, or speakers are on. Okay. Um, okay. There you go. Can you hear me? Yep. That's good. Okay, Michael Bartlett, uh, can you chime in here? Your speaker's off. Your mic's off. Where'd you go? There he is. My, there he is. Mike, we can't hear you. Unbelievable. Turn on your microphone. Can you chat? Can you chat him, Jeff? Are you able to? Mike, at the bottom of your screen, there's four circles. There's, you should be able to turn on your mic that way.
All right, do you have, Mike, do you have the phone number to dial into the meeting? If you can do that, please. All right, Mike, did you make uh, it? Can, can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, Michael, do you have the green card? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting feedback here. Uh, yes, I, I do have them. Yes, I do. Okay, they're actually supposed to go to the office. To the Slackman's office, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. All right. Well, they I can, can get them in it. tomorrow. Yeah, they can be dropped off as long as you have them. Okay, would you like yeah. to give a little explanation of the project? Sure. This is... Uh, a collection harvest, 50 acres. We plan on harvesting 123,000 board feet, 57 cords. It's uh, partly facilitated because of the mortality that has occurred as a result of the gypsy moth infestation. We're planting three yarding areas, so to speak. Uh, to the, the wetlands and terrain, most of the volume would come out to uh, John Kearns' driveway. There would be two small landings on Glenwood Road, and probably about 20% of the volume would come out to the landings on Glenwood Road, or Glendale, I'm Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, now we usually get a copy of the DCR forest cutting plan approval. That was emailed to Andrea this morning. Okay, Andrea, oh, well you wouldn't have gotten it so soon, but I, I do know the Conservation Commission says they have a copy of it. Yes. Andrea, didn't that go out today? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I emailed you that morning. Okay. Yeah, the board should have that. It went out this morning. I didn't receive it. It's the client looks like a certificate. Yeah, so it was a that I had sent this morning um, with correspondence. Oh, okay. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah. Um, you, Mike? Do you have some kind of written permission from John Kearns uh, with regard to uh, landing on on his property? Or I have I have offered a written proposal with John and he said he didn't feel that was necessary. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, what the, uh, one of the issues that the board's interested in is, you know, making sure that the pavement is uh, left intact and so forth and at the driveway entrances and, and for a forest uh, cutting plan. That's, that's one of the things that our director of public works would 
would look at uh, is uh, so John doesn't John says it's okay so that's uh, that, well if that's adequate for uh, for the board I guess that that'd be okay with me I did reach out to him and talk to him about it, obviously, and he, he thought it was best to use this driveway as far as the project goes. The boundary on Jim's property is very close to his driveway. So uh, if the selection would prefer to see something in writing before officially issuing the permit, I would think I could get something from John. Um. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think it's a problem. I just uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, that if there had to be repairs done, that that uh, you know the the Jim would be you know would be responsible, and I, I didn't want to you know if it, I I know they're family, so it's not as much of an issue if it was two separate you know. Um, entities but I, I just raised that concern you know because uh, it's, it's a little strange to have the landing on somebody else's property well correct I, I understand yeah. I think it would be useful just for, for our record to have it in writing a couple of sentences that the landing can be used in the driveway and then we have it in the file I thought Mike raised a good point if you're able to get the in in writing, that would be useful, I think. I would think you would do that. So we'd be glad to pursue that. And we can put it as one of the conditions. Okay. Anything else from the board? The public hearing, is there any public? Hold on, let me check on the phone. <clears throat> Hello, this is the public hearing on the logging permit. Is there anyone on the phone? Hello? Hold on. Uh, there's no one on the phone and I don't have any public comment in the public comment email. Okay, is there a motion then to call the public hearing? So moved, Priscilla. Second, Michael. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Hey, somebody want to make a motion? If I may, Madam Chair? Yes. There's one uh, additional condition recommended by the uh, Conservation Commission, which is to have a third party reviewer or a uh, third party harvester that, doing the inspections so that was for the Wee jack property i believe according to the notes i received from becky i i didn't understand a word you said i'm just telling you what the conservation commission is requesting i'm so, i'm sorry uh, <laughs> this is my part left my understanding with my conversations with Becky was that that was for the Squeejack property. And even so, in that case, she said that uh, felt that I would be appropriate to, to do so. Okay. Yeah, that's on, on the second one. This yeah. one she has, she wants the Conservation Commission to be notified of any plan changes receive notification of the start of the forestry activity and be provided with the license for harvester contact information when that's determined. Okay. My email's got switched up, but you're right. Yep. Thank you. Hey, does somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, this is Michael and I'll make a motion to approve the, uh, 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 forestry uh, harvesting plan uh, our permit uh, subject to our 
standard uh, conditions plus the uh, the conditions uh, of uh, uh, getting the uh, some something in writing from John Kern and also uh, the recommendations that uh, the chair just read from the uh, Conservation Commission subject to those two conditions in addition to the standard conditions uh, we usually put on on such permits. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Priscilla. Priscilla. Okay. okay. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, now we have a little ways to go before the next one, so. We can take up a spoon. These things we have the, um, Note from Jeff on a recommendation to continue current means of town operations until May 19, 2020, based on the fact that the governor has extended the stay-at-home order to May 18, 2020. Are there any questions, discussion from the board? Somebody want to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion that we extend the current um, working remotely from home when possible. Um, that was due to expire May 4th and extend it to May 18th as per Governor Baker's order. Second, Priscilla. Jane. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. I? Yes. And I vote yes. Madam Chair, I know uh, item uh, 6C, uh, the proposed officer is on the line. Robert's on the line if you want to visit with him about that appointment as a police officer. Okay. One second till we all get there. Okay. Hey, I assume the chief's on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, Chief, you want to give us an update on it? Yes, thank you. Uh, we recently completed our interview process for the position of police officer. And Robert Archambault was our top candidate chosen to fill one of the vacant positions. He has been a police officer for approximately five years, most recently working for the Chicopee Police Department. Currently has a Bachelor of Science in political, in, in political Science that he obtained from the University, uh, Westfield State University. Um, as with all candidates, he, we've completed a thorough background, pre-employment, physical, and psychological examination. And he currently possesses all certifications. He'd be able to get regular shift assignments on the recommended effective date of May 5th, 2020. Therefore, I would recommend the appointment of Robert E. Archambault Jr. as a police officer effective May 5th, 2020, with the hourly rate and benefits of a two-year police officer. Okay, any questions from the board? Uh, Robert, are you there? Yes, I am, ma'am. Hey, would you like to say a few words to the board? I, I look forward to serving the town of Sturbridge and its population, and uh, I'm happy that I could be here today. Hey, any questions from the board? Uh, no, ma'am, not at this time. Thank you. And... No, I didn't. 
I don't have any uh, any questions, but I I've looked through his resume and it looks like he's you know certainly uh, well qualified for for their job. So um, with that, if there's no other questions, I'd like to make a motion. Go right ahead. To concur with the appointment of Robert Ashambo as a full-time police officer effective May 5th, 2020 with the salary of 3104 per hour. There a second? Second, Priscilla. Okay. Any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote. So, Rada, congratulations. And welcome Thank you very to much. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see Thank you soon. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. you but this is the best we can do now. Congratulations, Rob. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And we have a couple of minutes. Um, there is a request to accept a donation to the Sturbridge Council on aging in the amount of 1000 $1,000 from Craig Moran. Is there a motion to accept that? I'll make a motion to, to accept uh, the donations to the Sturbridge uh, Council on Aging with the appreciation of the Board of Selectmen uh, of $1,000 from uh, Craig Moran, and then I believe there's uh, a couple other there's items. Two more, yes. There's can, a fifty dollars gift card make... to McNuck from Sue from Grandome, Grandome, and a twenty-five dollar Walgreens gift card from Phyllis Breitenfeld. Can I make that all there's in one, one motion? Sure. And I. And again, I would like to emphasize with appreciation from the Board of Selectmen. And the thank you note will go out. Jeff? Yes, uh, there's one more that came in today. It's $250 from Lawrence and Patricia Morrison. Can we tack that on to that motion, please? I, I would love to add that on to the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Priscilla. Mary, how do you vote? I vote yes. I just got a question, though. I also thank you for very um, generous donations. I agree with Mike. With the cash donations, did they make any request as to how the Council on Aging would use the additional funds? Um, did they have a certain project in mind? I think this is going towards food for seniors at, in need. So we're using a lot of these to buy food and delivering food to the seniors. Excellent, thank you. I vote yes, Mary Dowling. Okay, Priscilla? Yes. I? Yes. And I vote yes. One more thing, Madam Chair, on donations. Yes. Uh, the fire department received a donation late last week after the packet went out from OFS. Uh, they will receive 300 disposable face masks, six coveralls, 10 Tyvek suits, and 10, 110 Tyvek lab coats. The fire department's asking for those to be accepted with the board's thanks. Okay, would somebody like I know a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept with gratitude the um, donations of PPE coming from OFS to the fire department. Second, Priscilla. Okay, Mary, how do you vote? I vote yes, but I just wanted to ask a question. Um, is this in addition to what OFS already donated? Because our last meeting, I believe they also donated um, various equipment. And these, are, these are different ones. This is 
This is, is it more of the same? It's, it's a different set of PPE. Oh, very good. Hey, Priscilla, how do you help? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. It's uh, 7 o'clock. Time for our second public hearing. Mike, you have the notice? So I got to get back up there on my, uh, on my uh, agenda. Sorry, it's taking me a little while to uh, scan through all this stuff. Uh, uh, almost there. Okay. Come on, then. Okay, we're getting there. What are you doing? Gotta make sure I. Oops, went by it. Okay, yeah, this is the right one. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, uh, Chapter 132, Section 40 through 46, Board of Selectmen of the Town of Sturbridge will hold a public hearing on the petition of Michael Bartlett for a logging permit for 192 acres of land on 72 Shattuck Road, Sturbridge, Mass. 01566, owned by William Sujak. Uh, the uh, hearing will be held on Monday, May 4th, uh, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the Sturbridge Town Hall, 308 Main Street, Sturbridge, Mass. The Board of Selectmen has elect to, uh, consistent with Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, um, Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, sec Section 20, uh, to hold the public hearing virtually. Details regarding how to virtually access meetings can be found at uh, town website, www.derbridge.gov forward slash town dash administrator forward slash pages forward slash how to access vertical meeting. Okay. Mr. Bartlett, do you want to explain this one? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> We're planning uh, a harvest here for Bill Sweetjack. Uh, again, it's the case of the forest health, uh, primary motivation for doing something out there, significant decline in the health of the hemlock, a fair amount of mortality, and uh, mortality in the oaks as well from the gypsy moth defoliations. So, uh, Part of the harvest is a selection harvest, and part of it is what we refer to as a seed tree harvest, the heavier harvest, so to speak, uh, to regenerate the young forest and remove a lot of poor quality trees and trees that have become a fire hazard, so to speak. Okay, and again, you have the green card, so I'm assuming. Yes. Um, Andrea, on the thing you said you sent us with correspondence, I still don't have what looks like the certificate. I do have something you sent, which is um, the landowner's statement, but nothing from the CCR. Does oh, anybody else? So what I, oh, go ahead, um, Andrea. I, the, the CCR was for the 72 Shattuck Road. There was no DCR for the Brookfield Road project because the town isn't in a butter to that project. Oh, I know, but we always get um, a copy, even though we're not a butter. 
We always get a copy of the state approval. So, Mr. Right. Uh, excuse me if I could. The state forester has, has approved the plan, as I understand it. I have not received the certificate yet at this point from him, and I think due to the virus situation. Okay. So we will need that when it comes in. Yes, I understand. Any questions from the board? Okay, this is the one where um, beside the conservation, um, they want to receive notification of the start of the forestry activity provided with the licensed harvesters contract and contact information. And they want access to the site to make inspections. And finally, that third one, the third party. Okay to have the harvesting plan monitored by a third party. And you said you already agreed to this? That's a little different than what I had with the conversation I had with Becky last Friday. She said that her yeah, I'm sorry, interpretation things was that I would be considered appropriate to do the monitoring. So that's what I know about it at this point. Madam Chair. Do you have a copy? Uh, Jeff? That is correct from uh, the conservation agent. Since uh, Michaels is not the harvester, she's comfortable with Mr. Bartlett uh, providing review of the progress on the site and weekly updates to the conservation office. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Any questions from the board? Yeah, um, the, I think we got some correspondence, I mean, it might have been as today I, I saw, uh, that said that the work was going to start like May 10th or so, that soon? Is that correct? I don't think we're going to start that soon. It, the, you know, I was basing that on uh, figuring that things may get approved tonight. Yeah, even if they were approved tonight, we wouldn't be starting that soon at this point. It looks like it'll be at least a few weeks out from now. So, at the earliest. Yeah, I, I would say with based on the memo we got from the Conservation Commission, there's a little bit of coordination that has to go on before the start of work, uh, I would Correct. think. Okay, anyone else? Okay, it is a public hearing, so Jeff, do you know if anyone's phoned in? Let me, let me see. Hello, this is the public hearing on the logging permit for Shattuck Road. Is there anybody on the phone? Hello, this is the public hearing for the logging permit for Shattuck Road. Is there anybody on the phone? Madam Chair, no one's on the phone. I have not received any emails to the public comment email. Okay, is there a motion then to close the public hearing? So moved, Priscilla. Second, Michael. Okay, Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Priscilla, how do you vote? Yes. Mike? Yes. I vote yes. Okay, somebody want to make a motion on the request? Hmm. Make I'll a motion make to to approve the logging permit for 72 Shattuck Road. Priscilla. Second, Michael. Okay, Priscilla, did you want to mention with all with our... All the all the um, conditions that we do all the time. Plus the one that the CONCOM mentioned. Yes. Okay. Mike, is your second okay on that? Yes, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay, Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Hello? Yes. Mike? Yes. 
and I vote yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bartlett. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Next on the agenda, we have department report and administrators. Thank you, Madam Chair. I emailed out my, or what we've been using as a weekly report with everybody working remotely to keep the board up to speed on what the departments are doing as they work, some in the office, some out in the field, some uh, remotely. I'll be happy to answer any questions on those if you have them. Um, we do have ongoing projects that are, we're starting to regain our traction on. Um, boards and committees are meeting uh, routinely now. We have a very large conservation commission meeting tomorrow. They're starting at one o'clock. There's 12 public hearings plus other business. Um, and you see the action items on the agenda this evening that do uh, begin to move some other things along. So I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, on my report or any other topic. I don't have any questions from the board. Mary? I just wanted to say I have been appreciating getting the um, summaries. They're very detailed and useful and also on the COVID-19. So I appreciate that we're getting that information. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. Next we have water and sewer in the OEA. Shane there. Shane, you got to turn your mic on. There we go. Good, good evening. Good evening, um, I, submit, I submit the operation report for February and March. I'll start with any questions you, the board might have on those. Any questions from the board on either February or March? Um, so Mike, I was just looking at the septage that we're taking in. So uh, looks like we're doing pretty good as long as uh, as long as we're meeting our permit requirements. That uh, the only the only issue we had, and I outlined it in the February report. There was three zinc samples that were sent out in February. It's part of toxicity testing. One of them didn't pass. Um, I can't explain it. It was very, very close. We didn't make any changes. And the one that failed was the one that was taken on Monday. One on Wednesday and Friday passed, no problem. Um, it's just such a tight limit that, you know, any fluctuation lab data, that can happen. So besides that, we haven't had any other violations. Very good. Um, in my report, I also included a summary of the camera work that we did um, down at the South Line peer review. Uh, there's three uh, deficiencies called out. We'll be able to repair two of them in-house. And Butch and I are looking into having a subcontractor come in, subcontractor come in and repair the third one. Um, once they're repaired, that'll be 3 million gallons um, a year left going to Southbridge. The town has to pay for so um we didn't find a lot but we did find some we believe most of the issues over on that end of town are um illegal sump pumps and at some point um we'll have to look into a policy and addressing that i just don't think with all that's going on um right now it's time to do that we will be uh we've been flushing hydrants um we'll be finishing that up this week and then uh, that'll be completed. For the most part, we've just been trying to do a lot of maintenance at the plant, um, not really go out in public too much. Um, and besides that, it's business as usual. The water plants are running a lot less. I didn't run the month, the numbers for um, April yet. I started this morning, but I didn't finish. But in May, I mean, excuse me, in March, we're pumping about 100,000 gallons a day less of water, which is uh, basically due to the restaurants being closed and the schools. So um, I'll be working with Barbara Barry and Jeff 
and looking at um, projections on the effect on revenue, because I, I do believe it will have some. Um, so I'll be working with them on that in the next couple, couple weeks. Um, and like I said, besides that, as business as usual, I'll answer any questions. I just have one question. question. Mary? When does, when does the water get tested again? Is that coming through? Um, tested for what? Anything in particular? Well, no, but just, I know usually my house is used for annual testing to see if it's Oh, well, yeah, you're, you're a lead and copper customer. Yeah, that's coming this fall. In the fall, okay. Yeah. As, so it'll be, in, it's not just you, it's everybody. It's another round. We're on a uh, reduced schedule because we've never failed. So it's every three years, and this is, uh, this is the year for lead and copper. Priscilla? Um, Shane, with um, the schools closed for almost, will be almost six months, will the water be tested before the children go back? So um, the DEP sent out a directive um, a couple days ago on building stagnant water. Um, I forward that to the school, Butch, um, Robin, because she's your facilities manager, and Jeff, um, and there's some recommendations in that. Um, what we're going to do, to, because that's a, that's a pretty, very long line. It doesn't have a lot of customers. We will be flushing the hydrant at the junior high school um, probably once or twice a month just to keep fresh water out there. And then I'm hoping to have a conversation with Rick Weatherby where they'll be doing some flushing in the school. But anything that goes on in the school is the town's responsibility. I mean, I'm sorry, the school's responsibility, not the town's. Yeah, but what about pure water for the children? I mean, that should that's the town's responsibility. I understand that it's the school's responsibility in one respect, but it also the town has an um, ethical obligation to make sure that the children have safe drinking water. At least this is so, in my opinion. No, and I, and I agree with you 100%. One of the testing sites for bacteria is the, is the uh, pump station right after the junior high school and the high school, so that's tested monthly. And we also run tests in-house weekly on that for chlorine, pH, and fluoride. But I agree with Priscilla. I mean, you don't see any obstacles to the, to the schools wanting water tested before the kids go back. No, I, I don't see any. I don't see any issues. But the top, you know, the school should, you know, and I'll, again, I'll work with Rick Weatherby and the people at Burgess School. Before the kids come back, they should be in there, you know, flushing the building and making sure that the, the water in the building is stagnant. Again, I sent them um, stuff that came directly from DEP today on how to do that. Shane, have we had any problems maintaining residuals at the school, or, you know, historically or during this period so, of work? Uh, the rule, the rule for coliform sampling is you have to have a trace of chlorine. It does dip down. The chlorine does dip down when the kids are out of school. Uh, we see that every summer, but we just increase the flushing at the junior high school, and then that brings the residual back up. So you are taking care of that? Yes, sir, we are. Hey, anything else tonight? Okay, you all set, Shane? Yeah, thank you. Have a good evening. You too, Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're back to letter A. Consideration of possible action on the termination of the existing Little League Field lighting contract. Jeff, you want to run through this, please? Yes, thank you. Um, let me get to that part of my packet here. Um, why can't I find that? All right, one second. All right. There we go. Yes, um, and Robin's on the call too. She's uh, familiar with this as well. Uh, back in 2018, the rec department got a quote from Musco Lighting to install uh, lighting at the Little League field at the DPW or Town Barn location. They used that estimate um, 
to get a warrant article passed last June to get the funding, um, and then we bid the project based upon that estimate. Um, it came in a little high. Uh, the warrant article was 156 or 159, I believe, and the total bid was 175. Um, there was some extra money in the rec fund for to cover the 175. And then once the project started, uh, the contractor came back to us with a request for some change orders uh, for because the soils were not conducive to the uh, pole design and the support design. And then for LEDs and some additional electrical work that was not included in the original bid. Rather than negotiate the change orders, uh, since they are significant, uh, roughly $61,000, uh, requesting that the board simply cancel the contract, pay the contract the roughly $8,000 he has expended uh, for the soils testing, um, and rework the bids, uh, go back to town meeting for the additional funds, which Annie's working on with CPC, and then uh, re rebid the project and see what kind of uh, results we get. Um, the contractor is aware that the contract uh, may be canceled. Um, he understands, and uh, that's our recommendation at this point. Okay, questions, Priscilla? Um, when they got the bid in 2018, did anybody ask how long the bid was good for, how long the quote was good for? Because they often come with a good until, let's say, six months or whatever. Did anybody ask how long it was going to hold? Because obviously they took that number to the town meeting. I don't understand why this has now increased like this. Well, I think the, I think the quote that we got was, in, was incomplete scope. I think we, uh, we got a quote based upon what the poles and lights would cost, not all the engineering and, the, and, the, and some of the other things. Um, so I think now that we have an opportunity to rescope re the project and understand what it is we're looking for, I think we, it'll be a better bid and a better result. Not price-wise, but at least from a comprehensive nature of it. Jeff, will you oversee that, that quote to make sure that they ask for what they need? Because, I mean, they've been waiting for this lighting forever, and now this is like, it's almost ridiculous that everything wasn't done right the first time. Will you oversee it? Yes. I, I know you weren't here. I, I know you weren't here. I understand. And I'm not saying that in that respect, but I'm hoping that you'll oversee it. Yes, uh, with Robin and I, uh, we will make sure that all the projects going forward have a, a, a much different scoping process and be more comprehensive before we get to a point where we're trying to bid them out. But thank you, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Priscilla, this is Robin. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hi, Robin. Yeah. Hi. So um, one, of the, one of the difficulties is um, that the quote did not include electrical contracting. Um, and so we had to bid, put this out for public bid. Um, the original quote came from the subcontractor. So in, um, in the end, we had to get a general contractor to hire that subcontractor. That was one of the difficulties with this contract, as well as um, the original quote from 2018 for that 150 something thousand dollars was the exact amount that they put forward in the warrant article without any question. Um, so yep. there was a difficulty there as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to... Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mary. I just want to agree with Priscilla. I just think it's very unfortunate, and I'm glad that in the future we're going to provide some kind of a cushion because it's better that way. The money just stays with the town if we don't use it rather than go through this. And I just wanted to ask, was that more a result of the contractor? not quoting everything that that company should have? Or was it more us not um, requesting that everything that needed to be quoted was quoted? Because, I mean, I think it's unusual for the subcontractor to be the one quoting. Yes. Um, in, the, in the field of, this is Robin speaking, uh, in the field of Little League lighting, Musto has pretty much written the, the book for it. Um, has worked with the Little League associations and the particular subcontractor that the Recreation Committee went to to work with in the original folks. This is their, their wheelhouse. 
Um, so the bid that we had put out in the uh, fall in 2019 included a basis of design for that manufacturer. What we will um, what we will do going forward is to make the spec less proprietary, and it will open up the opportunities to the best that we can to ensure that we can do this project with a better price. Um, we've also since become a green community, which is, the LED is the additional challenge in this uh, bit here, is that it would, there was interpretation on their part that it was not included. So the change order requested is for 61000 That exceeds 20% of the original contract. And that is uh, a, a, there's not a written um, law in Chapter 30, 39M under the uh, state general law for the procurement of this. However, the interpretation of the attorney general's office based on former court decisions is that you cannot award a change order total greater than 20 percent so that is the other dilemma with this project i get it so it sounds like because Nusco kind of wrote the book on little league lighting that they could have given us the heads up that that wasn't a comprehensive quote that's how i view that um especially if they are the ones that do this type of thing so in any event i know it's water under the bridge um i hope that um this is going to be targeted for a special town meeting and it's not going to get put off a whole nother year. Uh, do you know what the recreation, I'm sure they want it done sooner rather than later as well, but do you yep. know what the time frame is going to be on them going to the CPC and trying to get the additional funds through? Community yep, has an answer to oh, thank you. Uh, I know there's a placeholder in the warrants you all reviewed last week. For this item and i think we're trying to get cpc together to provide the additional funding for this town meeting oh fabulous i didn't real okay great thank you hey anyone else yeah i i just want to question the uh exposure under the existing contract is uh eight thousand three hundred and sixty dollars uh is, is that our uh, entire entire exposure uh, to close out that contract, or is the contractor going to be looking for uh, additional costs incurred? This is Robin. The contractor has confirmed via email that the current payment of eight thousand three hundred dollars um, has uh, will um, cover all costs to date. That cost was mostly for the geotechnical boring, which um, was the result of, of uncovering the final soil um, recommendations. So that will go into the next bid. We will have a complete boring report for all contractors to bid on. Yeah, that, the, the reason I questioned it is because, uh, you know, the contractor must have had to pay for bonds and stuff like that uh, 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 for the original contract under Chapter 30, Section 39M bonding would be required so uh, it, I mean it just sounded kind of low to me just for a contractor to get out of a contract like this for, for that amount of money but if that's it uh, we're, we're in good shape thank you uh, Robin thank you hey does somebody want to make a motion then I'll make a uh, we make a motion to terminate the contract. Yes, to cancel. To cancel. Okay, so I'll make the motion to cancel the contract for the existing uh, the existing Little League lighting contract with Energy Electric Company. Second, Mary. Oh, Priscilla. Okay. <laughs> Priscilla, how do you vote? Yes. Mary. Yes. Mike? Yeah. You have to speak. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you were shaking your head. Couldn't hear it. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Okay. Next week, we're on D, a request for a concurrence on the appointment of Acting Chief Earl Dessert 
and the Emergency Management Director, effective May 13th. Any comments or questions? Jeff? Yes, at the last meeting, uh, I was asked to bring this back. Um, in oversight on my part, I, given that the chief has always been the, since I've been here, which is a very short time, uh, I didn't s separate the two positions, but I did speak to Earl Dessert, and it was our understanding that that role would be part of his interim or acting chief duties. He has a degree in emergency management and has been overseeing that operation in the department uh, ongoing. So um, I'm recommending or requesting your concur concurrence on that appointment. Okay, any questions? Someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we appoint Interim Police Chief Earl Desert as Emergency Management Director, effective May 13. That was Priscilla. Priscilla. Is there a second? I'll second it, Mary. Yes, yeah. Mary, yes. Yeah. Priscilla? Yes. Mike? Yes. I vote yes. Okay. Next, please. Mary Blanchard. That was the second. Yes. 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 Okay. And next is uh, Rick, if you get action on removing the town's property, casualty, professional liability and workers compensation insurance with the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association. Jeff, wanna have a little input? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, you can see from the packet, uh, there's roughly three elements to this, the property casualty, the professional liability and the workers compensation. Uh, IOD, which is for the police and firefighters, is a separate policy not included in this renewal at this time. Um, although it's up 1.5%, there's a series of credits and reductions uh, that will take place, which will actually make next year's overall cost lower than the current year cost. So um, we're recommending approval. Maya is not just an insurance company, and I'm not making a commercial here but they provide tremendous support to towns and cities across the state who are members. And again, it's not really a company, it's an association. It's as strong as their membership, uh, which is all uh, municipalities. So uh, we've been very well served and I would request uh, continuation of coverage by Maya. Any questions, comments? So the overall cost is 321,000 dollars per year for uh, professional workers' compensation and property and casualty, the total? Yes, and then there'll be a series of reductions. If we pay early, it's a 3% discount and so forth. But yes, the, the base price is 321, 113. I just wanted to get that out. Oh. So I, I just wanted the uh, total amount of how much that cost out there so that the public would know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. sure. for a uh, for a uh, operation as big as that is the town of Sturbridge that's a pretty good rate I would say I would agree okay is there a motion then so moved Priscilla Priscilla <laughs> there a second I'll second it. Michael. Mary, had to, how do you vote, Mary? Mary, yes. Priscilla? Yes. Yes, yes. Can I vote? Can I vote yes? Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, next we have a request to consider setting the time and date for the annual town meeting on Monday, June 29th at 7 p.m. at Tim Tasco High School. 
Any questions, comments? Um, I'm assuming that they will take all distancing uh, precautions if we do go to the high school? Uh, we have some planning to do. Yes, we have some planning to do. <laughs> I, I guess so. I will make a motion to accept that date of annual town meeting for June 29th, 7 p.m. Tantasqua High School. Second. Yeah, sorry. Is there a second? I second it, Michael. Hey, Mary, how do you vote? Yeah, I vote yes. And also, uh, with, with the same understanding that Priscilla said that any mitigation that's necessary will be in place. Mm hmm. Sure. Hey, Priscilla, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Okay, there's a um, consideration possible action on setting the date for the town election to Monday, June 8th, 2020 at Old Sturbridge Village from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Any questions, comments from the board? If I can make a correction, it's 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh, thank you. That was Lynn. And Lynn does have a nice write-up on how they're going to proceed. So uh, last week I spoke with the Board of Health, Ken Lacey. And we went over some uh, safety protocol. Um, what we're going to be doing is limiting so many people coming into Old Sturbridge Village. We'll be, we'll be facing apart the ballot boxes themselves to be a six foot distance away. And also um, looking at our exits and entrances and having hopefully what we have now is one entrance and having two exits going out. Hopefully we'll be able to use the doorway at precinct one, so precinct one doesn't have to use the entrance to exit the building. They could go out their separate door, precinct two and three exit through the same door. Lynn? Yes. This is Mike Supernaut. Have you thought of having something like a plexiglass shield between the poll workers and the people that they're handing the ballots to? Yes, as a matter of fact, we're gonna be doing a training the first week in June for all poll workers. We have ordered 12 plexiglass shields for the check-in and the check-out tables. We also are giving out uh, mask, hand, um, uh, mask gloves for each poll worker. We have sanitizer for the stations. The um, residents will be handed the ballot with a fresh pen. They will go to the ballot box, make their voting preference. They will then go to the checkout table, dispose of that pen in a bin. Then that pen will be sanitized and brought back to the check-in table. At that point, they will then take their ballot and dispose of it into the ballot machine. Wow. Oh, that's good. Excellent, Lynn. I, I didn't that's realize, that, especially with the pens, that that is a big source of, you know, germs. Yes. Um, I, I, I wanted to cut down on the poll workers because I feel we are going to do a lot more early voting ballots, and I'm going to need the um, workers to be concentrating on processing the early voting by mail. And absentees. Right now, we probably did about 450 early voting ballots, and I believe we're going to be doing a lot more over the next month. So, um, the last report I got from the state, they would not issue probably waivers because they don't want lines at the check in and check out tables. So, that I'm still in um, connection with the. Uh, State elections office 
and explaining to them my reasoning for cutting down and having people coming in from outside only like four or five at a time. So there wouldn't be any lines inside that you normally would have. When are you, that's excellent. I have a question. Yes. Are all your, I just wanted to know, I know you're reducing the amount of co-workers or you would like to, which makes sense. Is there any reluctance um, with respect to your co-workers about the June 8th day? Are you finding that some of them are I not. had, when, when I contacted them in March, everybody except two election workers were willing to work. And the two that did not, um, were not going to be working, I was going to ask to stay out just for the fact that they do have some underlying health issues. Okay, great. The people that I've spoken to now, I haven't made any, you know, phone calls. I was waiting to see what your vote was this evening. Those that I have been in um, contact with are, you know, more than happy to work on June 8th. But I do want to have extra people, like, for wiping down the ballot boxes, the uh, ver the voting for early vote um, for early voting and absentee voting. I'm going to need additional help on that. So I'm looking at um, possibly my election workers. Maybe if I can get some volunteers from the school, I might get some community service kids to at least maybe help disinfect. Pens, wipe down boots that I don't have to, um, you know, pay. And in terms of the mask, you're having all the poll workers in masks and... Correct. Okay, because I know now it's in order anyway. And I didn't know if you'll have somebody um, also encouraging those voters who are going in to wear a mask. Will so what I'm projecting, Mary, is I have a constable at each section one constable for precincts one and two, and then another constable at precinct three because it's in a separate room. I'm also asking for a police officer outside the door to keep people at a social distance of six feet while they're waiting to come in, and also to make sure that they're wearing protective. You can't, you know, we, you can't deny them if they don't. I'm hoping that I'll have extra masks for those people that do not have them or forgot them. That was going to be my question, some disposable ones available. Yeah. Okay, looks like you've got it all lined up very well. I hope I do. So, uh, yeah, I agree with Mary. Uh, not Lynn, this is Priscilla. I agree. I think you've got this down good. Now, you, let me, I just need to, correct, uh, to clarify this. You have early voting and absentee voting. Is that correct? That is correct. So if they want to go to early voting, do they send that same form that they would send for absentee voting, or is it a different one? It is a different form, and those will be made there right now at both post offices, and I will be putting out signs tomorrow with the new date of the town election yeah. with applications on those signs. They can also download it from the website. They can call the office. For, I can mail one to them, and I okay. also have them at the senior center when um, Leslie's doing her bread um, distributions on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. Now, let me just ask one other question because I'm sure we'll get asked this. Mm -hmm. um, the count will still happen the night of the election, or will there be a delay, as has happened elsewhere, and it's understandable with the situation what it is? So we are planning on doing all the absentee and early voting that day, so it will be processed throughout. I'm okay. assuming we're going to have more absentee and early voting ballots to process than actual people in that right. day. I think you're right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Hey, anyone else? Hey, thank you, Lynn. Since the, uh, the date is later than normal for voting, could we, is it possible that somehow we could notify uh, town residents either through uh, a robocall uh, uh, or something like that, that of the election and notify them that they can early vote? I, do, I think it's important that we encourage people that are of high risk to, uh, to do early voting. Um, I agree, Mike, and I was going to ask 
um, the, the police, if they could do some type of a robocall stating that the new date for town election is June 8th. And also, I'm going to have three signs, one at Hall Road, one at Cedar Street, and one at 148, noting the new date and also the application. Very good. Yes. You thought about a lot of this. <laughs> I've been working on it for a while. <laughs> hey, Jeff? Yes, we'll, we'll work with Lynn to get the word out. The Senior Center also has a, uh, a call calling system for all the registered seniors in town so in addition to the robocall we can uh, reach out to the seniors direct as well a couple times and and we'll help Lynn with whatever mm -hmm. she needs you also have thank you, Jeff. Assuming, uh, you all, we also have a town Facebook page do we not yes we'll use yes. social so media yes yep. Yep. All right okay yep. Yep. hey all set Hey again, thank you, and thank you. Hey, did we vote, or did we nope. talk? No, we didn't talk. <laughs> I'll make a motion to set the date for the town election for Monday, uh, June eighth, two thousand twenty, uh, and the time would be from six thirty a.m. to eight p.m. Yes. If I'm mistaken, that's my motion. And it's at OSV. At uh, Oster Ridge Village uh, location. Uh. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. It was, was Mary Dowling. Mary Dowling. Okay, any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Yeah. Priscilla? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Okay, next we have a request from the um, Special Events Committee for a use of the Town Common in the time of market beginning June 7th. Now, Jeff, you said there was a representative there? Yes. Uh, Hi. Caitlin's on the line. She's the market manager. Hello. Hello. Would you like to explain, please? Sure. Um, volunteers of the Sturbridge Farmers Market are requesting to get approval of use of the town common um, for the Sturbridge Farmers Market to be held as previously approved. We do understand that the common is currently closed to non-essential activity until further notice. However, farmers markets have been deemed essential for many reasons and we'd like to continue to offer the service to our community. Um, our guidelines that we've come up with, our updated ones, are based on the order of the Commissioner of Public Health and the Sturbridge Board of Health guidelines from Ken. If I may, Caitlin, is your phone and computer on at the same time? No, my phone is not on. Okay, all right, just getting some feedback. That's fine. I can try calling in from my phone if that's easier. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> hey, any questions from the board? Okay. I uh, did read through. It's uh, quite thorough, the planning and everything. We did get a letter from the um, Board of Health today. Mm -hmm. And the only thing different is, well, the only one that the special events people didn't have was the uh, Good Health wants to see the layout. Yes, so we do have a layout that one of our volunteers put together um, to show, and I will send that to him. I have it blown up here, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. I can try to put it up um, on the screen for you if you'd like to view it. You can try. I can try. I don't know if you're going to be able to. Um, so this is, see, I don't think, I think you're not going to be able to. <laughs> yeah. You can't see it at all. Not quite. Not really. yeah. but, but we will get that to um, the Board of Health for them to approve. But we will have another meeting with Ken on that. Um, the only oh, other changes to ours is we had it at um, 15 feet apart between the vendors, 
and they have it set at 20 feet, so we will make sure to update ours. Okay, I was just going to say that. That was the only other thing. But it was really quite a report. Can you comment on Mary? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say um, the special events committee that the um, Farmers uh, Volunteers works under unanimously supported it. And I do want to really reiterate that um, the, the, um, all of the volunteers, I'm going to name a few, but I don't want to do that because they're all, they work really hard um, to make sure that they are following the Department of Public Health guidelines. And initially, when I went into the FCC meeting, I didn't even realize that farmers markets are essential. But it makes so much sense that they are because it alleviates the pressure from supermarkets. And it also um, is a viable and uh, alternative to getting really fresh produce right from our farm. So it supports the local farmer as well as the residents. So I, you know, wholeheartedly support it. Um, I just wanted to add one thing, though. Um, and we did bring it up at the FCC. Um, and, um, and I know this was thought about by the farmer's market having a small window of time um, for just the seniors and those that would consider themselves high risk or more vulnerable, which is what the supermarkets did. And I know, I think, Lisa, you told me that it, it was raised and brought to the health agent. And I guess his position I don't, was that that's not really needed and it would almost crowd the time when everybody could go. I, I'm kind of... Um, paraphrasing what I heard. But I just wanted to put it out there again for the Board of Selectmen because I gave it more thought. And because the Department of Public Health has strict requirements with respect to how many customers can be there per square foot, we won't be overcrowding um, the other time, periods of time, if we allow, say, a half an hour at the very beginning of the market for the seniors to go. I, I just think that's a nice gesture I like that the supermarkets do it. Um, and again, if the concern was that the market was going to be too crowded the rest of the time, we know that it's not because there are requirements as to how many, what the maximum amount of customers can be. So I didn't know how the rest of the board felt about it. But I think the market's open for four hours. Is that? And I, yeah. would, think, and I would love the input, but I just think it's perhaps the first half an hour we had it open to seniors and those that are more at risk. I didn't know how the rest of the selectmen felt. So if I can just chime in real quick before yeah. anyone else. We did talk a lot about this and where we came um, at it too was the percentage wise is too high. Supermarkets that do it, they're open for 10 hours, we're open for four. So eliminating an hour is a big chunk of that time and we did find no, I was only thinking a half an hour. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, which, yes. And the other thing that came to our minds was that at that time in that hour, a lot of our seniors will be probably attending virtual um, church services. Um, and we also found last year that a lot of our uh, seniors came after church. So that first half hour is it wasn't that beneficial to them. It's something that we are, of course, flexible on. We are hoping to maybe leave it as is for the first few markets and maybe pivot as needed if the community wants it and if there is um, definitely a need for it. All right, well, that sounds reasonable. I mean, because considering, I mean, supermarkets do it, but you have to look at supermarkets as having a broad range of products and everything. This isn't quite the same. This is more or less like going into just the produce department in the supermarket. But your idea of, you know, keeping it the way it is and then re-looking at it is a good idea. Sundays are busy. Now, what are the hours that you're requesting? 9 to 1 p.m. Okay. Is that, that what it was? An hour of seven and an hour after. I'm sorry? Is that what it was last year? Yes. Oh, something around here has been 10 to 2. I don't know what. <laughs> Any comments from the board or questions? Yeah. How, how again, are you going to uh, manage uh, the 
man manage the entire town common so there's not more than 10 to 15 customers per 1,000 square feet. Uh, so we, we are requesting help from um, DPW, and I know Jeff has reached out to them to help us set up a perimeter um, around, and we will have an entrance and an exit, and we will have one volunteer, kind of like they do at the grocery stores, one volunteer at the entrance, one at the exit, and we will count and monitor and let no more than 50 people at a time. Thank you. Yes. Hey, anyone else? No, I, I was just going to make the motion subject to a couple of conditions, but I don't know if we're at that point yet. <laughs> I think so. Anyone else? All right. I think so, we're at that point. Okay. I'm going to make a motion that we approve um, the town common for the farmer's market um, for the hours of 9 to 1 and commencing in June. Subject to them adhering to all of their guidelines that they set forth in their memorandum to us. And in addition, the additional parameters set forth by our local Board of Health agent and also the um, Department of Public Health guidelines. And I add that because I know um, their um, memo incorporated them into it. But just in the event that there is some discrepancy between the two, I mean, I didn't put one document against the other, so I want to make it subject to them to it, adhering to all of the state uh, regulations as well, and um, you know, subject to obviously any regulations that any um, parameters or guidelines that are established in the future as well. Second, Priscilla. Hey. Mary, yeah. Priscilla. Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Hey, thank you for all your hard work and all your input. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Take care. Okay, next on the agenda we have old business, old by 19 update. Jeff? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I did not get a chance to write anything up this evening, but I think the biggest, you know, you uh, took care of in your business section, extending the current uh, means of operation for another two weeks. And at your next meeting, you'll have that on the agenda as well, depending on what the governor is recommending or ordering to, to that extent. Um, one of the big, one of the things we are starting to work on are reopening plans. Um, uh, the senior center, the library, COB, and town hall uh, need all different things. Uh, Robin has been working with all the departments on sneeze guards for those that have open uh, service areas for the residents. Uh, those will be installed um, for each office that wants them. Um, we do want to put them everywhere and make accommodations. We are planning for gloves and masks and those kind of things. Um, Preliminarily, we're looking at the first week that the restrictions are lifted to bring the staff back for that first week and then arrange working processes that allow for the social distancing and the mitigations. And then maybe as we go into the second week post uh, mitigation to have the public re-enter those spaces. But that's really CUB and Town Hall. The library has their own unique set of circumstances as does the senior center. And they're working with their environments and their cohorts to come up with consistent um, practices and reopening procedures that suit their needs. Um, a lot of the senior center is programmatic uh, and rather than have everybody in the building at once, maybe they need to double the amount of programs but cut the number of people that can do them in half, uh, those kind of things. So we'll be working through those issues in the next few weeks and come up with plans for each of these facilities uh, as we return to a not a normal, but an, an, a next modified normal. Uh, so that's kind of where we are with the COVID-19. Uh, there are seven active cases in the community. Uh, we have roughly 20 to 25 cases throughout. There have been recoveries. Um, one of the issues we'll have to work through as we go into June is how do we conduct public meetings when people may not feel comfortable coming to a building with 20 to 30 other people. 
So there may be a period of time where remote meetings take place along with live meetings. Um, so we're working on that. And what actions does the Board of Selectmen have to take to provide for that so a, a member can vote remotely if they uh, choose not to attend a meeting full of people, a room full of people? So those are some of the things we're working through. Uh, every town in Massachusetts is having the same conversation right now. Um, we're getting good ideas from other locations. Uh, Robin's been fantastic in, in getting these sites prepped. So uh, that's kind of my report on COVID-19. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any, any questions? Gary? I, I just had a couple of uh, comments and a, and a question. Um, it's excellent that we've had recoveries. As we all know, we did have one fatality that we believe was related to COVID-19. So, you know, God rest that person's soul. Um, I was concerned, I'm glad that we're gonna, that the staff is, you know, now brainstorming as to how to make social distancing and other mitigation effective when the town hall opens. And I'm thinking like in particular, the town clerk and assistant town clerk um, really have a lot of exposure because their window is entirely open mm -hmm. and they have a lot of you know um, residents coming in on a regular basis and it's also somewhat where residents stop when they don't know where they want to go and then they're directed to planning or wherever so i'm hoping that um, that office in particular considers some kind of you know plexiglass something to protect both both of them, really, the, the, the staff as well as the residents. Jeff? Uh, Robin's been working with every, all the departments to have sneeze guards, which are the plexiglass guards, yeah. installed. So that goes for yeah. the offices at COB and Town Hall. Beautiful. And the Senior and Center. Still, the Senior Center and the library will get them as well. And we, I know I ask this every week, but our PPE is still very well um, Staff for our first responders? Yes, we are holding our own and we're receiving shipments. Uh, as we move towards reopening, we'll get PPE for the general office staff as they deal with the public gloves, masks, wipes, those kind of things. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, now. Do you want a motion to continue the current um, means to town operations until May 19th, 2020? I was just getting Sorry. down to that. Yes, Mike. We already did okay. that. We already did oh, we that. Did. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else have open? I do. Mike? No, I, I don't have anything. Silva? On the COVID? No. no Mary does. Business. Oh, old yeah, business. No, old. no, no, nothing. Okay, Mary, any old yeah, I just Yeah, I just have one bit of old business. From the last meeting um, on when we did the warrant articles, I know we clicked, but um, held off on supporting the tax relief in the amount of 350000 and I just want to say that I, I sent everybody by email the question that I asked of Barbara um, on getting calculations. Now that we all have a copy of that fiscal policy, it gives the range of where the cash reserves should fall from a prudent fiscal standpoint. And um, I don't know if any of you had a chance to look at it, but I just wanted to raise that. Because, okay. Um, I asked her for calculations of where that percentage is at the 350,000 release, but then also at 400, 450, and 500, because I know at least uh, Selectman Jimmis had mentioned 500, and I just want to know, would we still be honoring that fiscal policy if we increase tax relief? So once we get that information, I'd like to revisit that warrant article, um, possibility of changing it or recommending it as is once we have that data. Hey, Jeff? Uh, and I've, as we spoke with the uh, warrant article meeting, uh, you know, we wanna make sure that the budget you put forward to town meeting does not raise taxes. 
Um, we'll put together that information that Select Woman Dowling wants, but we're also going to look at other ways to get there. I think uh, just using free cash may, particularly if it's not sustainable in the following year, you don't want your tax rate to boomerang. So we want to look at all those options and all those considerations as we prepare a budget that uh, suits the needs of the Board of Selectmen, suits the needs of our fiscal policy, but also is something that is sustainable and won't cause uh, a rebounding or unintended consequences in the, in the following fiscal year as we still recover from the economic impacts of COVID-19. Yeah, that, that would be my major concern is that we may be facing uh, decreasing revenues in the coming years. So it may be best to put uh, this money in stabilization at this point or something like that rather than, uh, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice to say tax relief, but mm -hmm. uh, for the fiscal policy of the town, it's conservative to uh, it's, it's uh, preferable to uh, um, for the stability in coming years because uh, it's a good chance that revenues will decrease in the next I, uh, uh, years. Hey, Mary. Um, I don't disagree with what Mike is saying, except that I that's why I specifically asked for the impact that it will have on the fiscal policy. And I am right. following the fiscal policy. The fiscal policy, if you read the language of the document, already takes into account emergencies. That's why 10 to 15 percent is recommended. So that is already being prudent. Um, I don't. I don't know what the figures are going to end up showing, but I don't think we have to exceed what that fiscal policy dictates. It's worked for us in the past. And um, I, and if we want to change it, then that's a whole other discussion. So uh, we, we've had that discussion before where Selectman Dowling has said this before. But this is what we talked about it when we had the warrant discussion mm -hmm. um, on how, and I know, Jeff, you had said you were going to do everything you could, um, whether it was adding it 400000 or in other ways. Mm -hmm. And we did talk about the future and the impact in the future. So we have been thorough in our discussion on what is in the best interest of the town yes. and its residents. I, I yes, because we don't know um, the rev the revenue numbers, the state numbers. I mean, there's mm -hmm. Chapter 70. They may gosh knows what they'll do with Chapter 90. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking about really big impacts. We're probably in better shape than a lot of towns. They, We'll get through it, and with uh, Jeff and Barbara and the finance team working on it, we'll have good numbers. So, yes, Mary, we will address it. Jeff, you had your hand up? No, I just wanted to encourage the board that uh, we, we, we have heard you. We do uh, understand where you are as a group and as individuals in, in this, uh, but we also are going to look at, uh, at a two-year issue at a minimum. We want to make sure that what we can do this year to ease the burden doesn't boomerang on us the following year and we can be consistent with our residents and our tax rates. That's all. I'm good, Mary? No, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay. Any new business? Mike, do you have any new business? No, I don't. Mary, do you? Uh, no. Philip? No. The only new business I have is the town administrative evaluation. And just to explain for the public, as we do every year, every selectman receives a form to fill out. They are given to me. I compile them. Each category has a score of one to five. I get a number on that. Also, the comments, um, I go through them. I put pro comments and some not so pro. I try to make a balance. I do not put everything. The summary evaluation, which I will read, Jeff also has the summary 
plus the individual selected evaluations. I'll go into personnel file. I know, Mary, you mentioned you didn't think we had to give our evaluation to the town administrator, but you always do. I, I have yeah, well. an understanding. I mean, I, I have always done it. But oh, yes. Before you were chair, it was my understanding that some selectmen during that particular board um, did not, it was left to their discretion whether they wanted to give their individual one to the town administrator. And I think in the past, other select people that are no longer select people didn't always do that. Um, but my, yeah. you know, my protocol is I, I want to give mine. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. actually, the, um, if it hasn't been followed, it should have been always followed because it is. And, you know, the individual evaluations should be discussed with the individuals and the town administrator. The um, summary one is public record. The individual ones are all confidential. Okay, so the first category was budgetary financial. And on this, out of a possible five, Jeff scored a 3.33. Some of the comments, Jeff works closely with the finance department and others to keep an eye on revenues and expenditures. He attended the 2020 budget hearing even before he started in his position. 2021 budget books were timely distributed. I think it's 4.33. Yeah, that's 3.33, I think. Yes. yes, it's 4.33, because only three oh. of the four put in yes, a number my, or something. My um, copy, that part didn't print too clear, so I can fix that. Personnel administration, 4.25. Yes, only three did on the budget, so I divided by three instead of by the uh, four. 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 Did evaluate. Personnel administration carries out charter requirements. The personnel administration recognizes the value of good employees and uses all reasonable efforts to, to ensure that the best available individuals are recruited and hired. Jeff scored a 4.25. He had two excellent, one good, and one acceptable comment. Jeff has brought forth excellent candidates for open positions. He often meets with department heads to share ideas he does not micromanage. Supervision slash, slash leadership, 3.63. Builds and motivates the team, provides direction, monitors performance as necessary, guides effectively. One excellent, one good, one acceptable, one halfway between acceptable and poor. Comments. Some department heads don't always feel valued. Jeff is always open to discuss issues and plans with employees. He has an open door policy and meets regularly with departments. He sometimes has a lack of patience with the staff. Some staff say they work well with him. Staff development, total of 3.75. One excellent, one good, two acceptable. Jeff works with department heads on setting their goals. He provides assistance when needed, but recognizes the capabilities of the staff. <clears throat> Public relations. Just scored a 4.25 on this. Two excellent, one good, one acceptable. Comment. Guess is always available to the public. He responds to them immediately or as soon as possible. He is very visible at town functions. Employee and labor relations, 3.75. One excellent, one good, two acceptable. Comment. Jeff did a good job completing the collective bargaining agreement. Good job addressing concerns of the farmers market ball, of the farmers market volunteers. Some department heads feel uncomfortable relaying their concerns to him. Policy execution, 3.88, two excellent, one acceptable, one halfway between poor and acceptable. Comments, once the board has adopted a policy or directive, Jeff executes them in a timely manner. 
the TA sometimes seems to be trying to set policy interactions with the board, 3.63, one excellent, one good, one acceptable, one halfway between acceptable and poor. Comment. Jeff gives timely feedback to the board. He constantly updates the board through text and email. One comment was he needs to improve his communications with the board. Intergovernmental, 4.25, two excellent, one good, one acceptable. Jeff works well with Senator Goldby and Representative Smola. He attends many MMA meetings. He keeps well informed through emails and notifications from DLS and other state agencies. Effectiveness, productivity. Priscilla, what number do you have on this? This is one that didn't come through on uh, mind. 3.75. I think it's 3.75. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, one excellent, one good, two acceptable. Comments. Jeff is very task-oriented and committed to accomplishment. He is very well organized and executes directives of the board quickly and efficiently. Goal slash performance attainment, 4.25. Considering resources available is progressing with fiscal year goals. Two excellent, one good, one acceptable. This is one of Jeff's strengths. He does a good job working on yearly goals and keeping the board updated on their progress. Overall, Jeff is doing a good job with the staff, with the board, and with the town administrator all working together for the town. We will no doubt continue to see progress in all areas. Okay. Jeff, is there anything you would like to say? I think Priscilla has a comment. Priscilla? Um, I, I think that um, on, on the analysis that you have, you say that the majority of the board, and I think, I think that needs to change. Uh, I deleted to be it. A little. I'm sorry? I deleted it. Okay, because you didn't delete it on the one that you sent out. So, the it's one the I one received I just, on the... The one I received on the email has it in there. When I read it tonight, it's deleted. And it's deleted I know you deleted it stuff. when you read it, but is it deleted in copy? Because it's pretty much a split. Yes. It's deleted in copy? Yes. Copy that it goes into the file. So what is the comment we're adjusting? I, I'm lost on that. Um, actually, at the end, Jeff, the last page, it says overall the majority of the board feels Jeff's doing a good job. I would agree that it's not a majority of the board. Yes. All right. But overall, reading all the comments and looking at all the numbers, overall, it is a good job. It's a total of 3.97. Mary? Uh, I just had a <clears throat> thank you. Um, I just had a few comments and a couple of motions that I want to make that pertain to the evaluation process. But I just wanted to start by saying I think it's um, very difficult and commendable to all town administrators that they have their evaluation in a public setting like this. I, I really wish it was an executive session because um, that's how the private sector does it. So I know it, it can be uncomfortable. Um, and um, I appreciate the fact that it is in public session. Um, one of the one one motion is is pretty um, straightforward. I think. Oh, wait a minute, Mary. Mary, excuse me. Oh. I don't mean to interrupt you, but we don't make motions on this. This is not a. Um, we don't make a motion to accept this or anything. This is but just. But you don't. You don't know what the motion pertains. No. Wait a minute. Excuse me. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We don't take a motion to accept this. This is in the contract that the chairman of the board makes a summary. It is just given. Period. That's not, not voting to be accepted or anything. Okay. okay. So what is your okay. motion concerning? Okay. Um, I'd like to move the evaluation time to May. 
um, because I think that gives a better opportunity for us to see the budget process. Um, I was one of the ones um, in the first category that didn't, um, that I, I made comments, but I felt like I couldn't really evaluate well because I did my, you know, even before I received the budget, I got the budget book, but we hadn't really had an opportunity to see um, the whole budget process. And this happened with Leon as well. He came on board at about the same time. And I also I evaluate effectively. So I don't have to make it right now while we're discussing this, but I think it's certainly a motion that would be within my right to make. And I can wait under new business and I can do it at another time. Because the- Well, actually, Mayor. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, because I think when we do it in February and March, well, it got detained, so this is a better time. Um, I think it's too early. I think it cuts the budget season right in half. Um, but again, I don't have to uh, make that motion now, but I will at some point. I will, I guess I'll ask it to be an agenda item, the evaluation process, but then I'll make the motion then, if that's better. Well, it, it is, uh, it, you know, I understand the point and I don't disagree with that, but we'd have to go back to the contract. The contract definitely states that the town administrator will be evaluated on the date that he was um, or she hired, which is April in this case, on a yearly basis. I mean, that does move it a little further. Okay, well, we already did it to do it according to the contract, yes. but that's fine. Um, I guess my other two motions I will ask to have as an agenda item, unless you, you're willing to hear them. I don't know if you would or not. Well, well why don't you save them for an agenda item so that we could get a heads up on what they entail? I'm sorry, a heads up on what? Why don't we get them for an agenda item so that we can have a heads up on what they entail? Okay, so you do want to hear them now? Yes. No, for an agenda oh. item. I would. Oh, okay, but I, I would like to hear them. <laughs> I would like to hear it now. Yeah, I would too. I'm not trying to be controversial. Well, that, that's one of them. Um, the, the other one, um, and I brought this up before, this has to do more with the evaluation sheet. And I think we, we voted on it, and I think the board was split 3-2 on it. But... The categories, um, acceptable, excellent, good, acceptable, poor, and unacceptable. I feel like poor and unacceptable are like the same thing. And I would have a very hard time giving, to me, poor means you're not doing anything right. Mm -hmm. And that is unacceptable. So I feel like those two categories really merge. Personally, just like in school, I, I would prefer if poor was a little bit um, more positive and read improvement needed. So it would go excellent, good, acceptable, improvement needed, and unacceptable. Because again, poor and unacceptable are synonymous to me. And the other one is a little bit more positive. Um, so that's- well, you're not, you're not, Oh, sorry, Mary. You're not the only one that's had that thought. I don't have any disagreement with that because it is tough. Yeah, so that would be, those would be so we can bring it up. Now we my can third bring it up at a meeting. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Mary. I said we can bring it up as an agenda item and vote on it. Okay, and then my last one, um, which is just food for thought as well. Um, I know we have agreed to a process about of how we do this, but it's actually not written down. This was just what our policy is. Um, so I am going to suggest, I think it's very difficult. I'll stop by saying this. I think it's very difficult for you as the chair and the vice, well, not the vice chair, but Priscilla has always been the one that has assisted you to like take all of our different writing styles and different perspectives and what we consider important and not and, and write a summary. I, I think that's very hard. Um, I know I tended to go on and on, and it's hard to say what I think is important and not important. Um, so my suggestion would be um, that we submit our individual evaluations to our chair 
um, for the purposes of a composite review for the quantitative score, um, just as you did 4.3, 4.25, but that's a comment section that each individual selectman would be able, if they so wished, to attach a few of their own comments rather than have a composite comment. Because we're all coming from different places, and um, I, for one, would nowhere near make it as long as I did for the personal one. But two or three sentences that highlight our view rather than trying to have one or two people summarize what are really subjective comments. And then that way there, we have a composite of the objective criteria, excellent, good, acceptable. And then each selectman just offers a couple of sentences in each category. And that kind of um, takes care of the, the need to like decipher and pros and cons. And every selectman gave, gives a few of their own pros and a few of their own cons. And, and I think that might be a little bit more accurate and a little fair. So it's something to think about. Um, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that. So, so we can think about it. it. You know, it entails a little more paperwork, that's all, putting all those comments. That's why, like, I mean, I've been doing this 10 years, and it's not that difficult to call the main ideas of what most people say. And now, you Mary, you write beautifully, as you say, and even Priscilla, I tend to be shot and click, but um, I've never really had a problem pulling the major point. And as I did say at the beginning, I try to balance some pros and some not so pros. Okay, so you had your hand up. Oh, yeah, just, I, I agree with what Selectman Dowling said, and I think um, we can bring this up when we do that on an agenda item, because I've gone through past evals as, as long back as 10 years ago, and they were more comprehensive in their comments. So what Selectman Dowling is talking about did appear at one time, way back, it's before me. So um, I think it'll give us time to go back and look at some of those and you know, evaluate the thought that she had. I think it's good to put it as an agenda item. Where did you get the evaluation before you? Um, their public record. Their public record online, yeah. Their public record. Oh, because I do know sometimes past boards haven't even written comments, but just checked off good, mm -hmm. excellent, poor without comments. But we can discuss it as an agenda item. Okay. Yep. Okay, next we have... Do I get, funding. Madam Chair, do I get to comment? Oh, yep. Uh, yes. I want to... Sorry, yeah. I asked you. I want to thank uh, the Sturbridge community for the last year. I've been very welcoming. Uh, my wife and family have enjoyed it very much. I've enjoyed working here. But uh, to follow on to with what Priscilla has said, it's clear that the majority of the board and I are really not on the same page. Um, and I would hope going forward we can get there. But if not, it's probably not going to be the long-term solution myself or the board had anticipated. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think, and this is just my thought, once this COVID is over, I think we could be due for a retreat for this reason. Rather than, and, and I know how Select Ben Dowling talked about, you know, it's better when it's executive session, but we don't have that luxury because uh, private end does. But maybe a retreat, even though it's a public stated date, um, might be a good time for us to say where we feel rather than just hearing it this way and seeing the 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 evaluations if we sat around and talked and said this is what i said but this is why i said what i said and then have a dialogue i don't know how you feel about that jeff but to me when there is anything like this it, the face to face is very important and and somebody may make a comment but not mean it the way you may take it or vice versa mean it even more in depth well i, I just think that that's one way to solve it or, or, or bring an understanding, if you will. Well, I've never done a review on an employee where 
I gave them a host of comments without an ability for that employee to respond before they became final as part of the review. And I would have anticipated that opportunity uh, to be afforded to me by a majority of the board, but it was not. Um, so that's where I am. I would, I would encourage dialogue, but it was a very, un a very awkward process and one I didn't feel was consistent with my agreement with the town. Um, well, can I ask, uh, and, and I'm going to stop. And I'm going to stop there. I think that's enough for one night for me. And you can talk all you want. I'm just so not going to. No, no, we're, well, we're, we're moving on. But Priscilla, no, I, I think your idea is good. Um, we do have to get to this COVID-19, first of all. And, uh, well, that's, back, but that's but part of the reason. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this for myself. Uh, whether the town administrator chooses to hear it or not, I'm still saying this for myself. The COVID interfered with my ability to want to talk to him. That's I don't want to do it on a computer screen. I don't want to do it by phone. I want to sit across from him and talk to him. And obviously right now, we're prohibited. I understand. But it's not something that's off the radar. Thank I mean, you. That, that's hey, just where hey. I'm at. Because we so didn't get this done until April, when it should have been done in March, and it wasn't. Had it been done in March like it should have been, we would have had a discussion. We wouldn't have been sequestered yet. Thank but you. now that we're the way we are, it's different. Okay. No, no. Mary, we're going to move on, okay? We can uh, address this. It, 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 was a, it was a positive comment, so would you just allow me to know? Okay, that's okay. No, and I do want to thank, like I I, once, think once again, I do uh, thank the community for the support throughout the year. I've enjoyed working here, and uh, there's a lot of terrific opportunities for the town of Sturbridge. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, correspondence. Mike, do you have the list? Yes. Uh, on April 28th, uh, the Board of Selectmen received a letter from uh, Charter Communications. Uh, regarding the uh, egg uh, amount, and let's see, it says, please find and close a check in the amount of $141,555.43, which is for the annual PEG access payment uh, from Charter to the town of Sturbridge. Uh, and uh, so, so we got our peg payment and the other um, correspondence was from uh, Friendly Ice Cream Corporation and that has to do with their uh, uh, their employees and the COVID-19 and the situation that they're in and uh, uh, in, in compliance with uh, federal uh, federal uh, regulations. So, and that, that was dated uh, or received on April 28th as well. And those are the two, two uh, items of correspondence that we have uh, on, the, on our agenda. Hey, um, Andrea did email out two more today. But Andrea, you still with yeah. us, Andrea? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Could you? Could you put those aside and put them with our next meeting packet? That way everybody will have had a chance to read it in case they have questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did look at them, but I didn't know that they were part of tonight's meeting. I thought they were correspondence that well, came in after the, the agenda was formulated. Well, that's Andrea's efficient. It comes in and she gets it out. No okay, next. Okay, next we have um, approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes. The um, April 21st meeting that we had at um, 5.30. Okay, now, Andrea, on that one, um, Mike Supernat was not present until we adjourned. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry, you are on mute for a second. Okay, then at the bottom of the page, that first sentence, Mr. Bridges informed the board you can delete no. Let me inform the board that. Okay. On the next page, 148, the first complete paragraph, Chair Blanchett asked about the hotel, motel, and then it should say, and meal tax. So the two separate ones. A next paragraph, third line down, third line, uh, third word from the right, Sure, what the word's supposed to be because it says she wondered how the study would air that. Okay, so that was you talking. Do you remember what you said? Yeah. I'm trying to trying to I'm trying to think. Say that she knows. Yeah. Oh, impact. Impact. Okay. I think you got too much there. Uh, it's like, I think it should say how the study would impact the department heads and that not, not with the arid that and how would the study, it's like redundant. So it should say would impact the department heads. Okay. Andrea. Okay. Yeah. And then we just need we just need the time down at the bottom that we adjourn that part of the meeting. Okay. Did anyone else have anything on those? Okay, then we had the regular meeting of the 21st. Anybody have any corrections or deletions or additions? I thought they were very well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion then to accept the first set of minutes with the... So moved. So moved, Priscilla. I'll second them, Mary B. Priscilla, how do you vote? Yes. Eric? Yes. And I vote yes. And, and I abstain. Mike abstaining. So it's three to zero. Okay, is there a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes? So moved. So moved. Oh, okay. And I'll second, Priscilla. And I made the motion Eric. there. Oh. A. Stella, how do you vote? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, next we have Citizens Forum. I'll check if there's Anyone someone on the, the phone? line. I'll check. Okay. We are now at the citizens forum portion of the meeting is there anybody on the phone is there anybody on the phone madam chair there's no one on the call okay so now we're back to the beginning of where there's a request for an executive session mike do you have the uh add to the motion I, yeah, I got to get back up there. Hold on a second. It's all the way at the, that was at the very beginning of the uh, minutes. Okay. Oh, of the meeting, right. Of the meeting, That's I meant. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this. I guess. 
This is uh, uh, for ex executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares uh, then in an open session may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the town. Okay, it's so declared. And we actually should be quoting that it's Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21. Okay. And that was um, what paragraph? Okay, I don't... I don't... Section 21? Okay, I, I don't have that in front of me. I'm sorry. Ma Mass General Laws, Chapter 38, Section... 21. 21? Uh, and I don't know which paragraph it would be for... for... Um, for the uh, exchange purchase or lease of value or real real property. I don't have chapter 21 in front of me, so I'm... Would you like me to get hey, that? Hey, Jeff, do you up here? Yeah, hold on, let me go do, grab Do we that. need? Let me go grab that information. There's, there's only about 10 paragraphs to ch choose from. Yeah, you gotta choose the right one. Yeah, we need the right one. I think if you just reference, but I don't think you needed the number if you just. I think it's 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 actually paragraph six. Okay. I believe you. Well, I just came across my uh, cheat sheet. It's, it's paragraph yeah. six. Paragraph. I found the same cheat sheet. Go. <laughs> does, does everybody have on the board have the copy of that? Is we received them, oh, Jeff? Who who printed your blue one? Which uh, American O'Connell? It was on my bulletin board when I got here, but uh, I can I can get uh, a new one out to everybody. Right. Right. Um, I don't need it. I have two. I've got one from K and P that's older, but it's the same. Okay, so is there a second to Mike's motion? I'll second it. Yes, second. Wow. Okay, that was Mary Darling that seconded. Okay, how do you vote, Priscilla? Yes. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. Mike, how do you vote? Yes. I vote yes, and we will not reconvene in open session. Okay, give us a minute to turn off the public stuff, and then I'll be right back. So nobody move. Um, there's a caller 13 on the line. Oh, they just hung up. Okay, give us a minute. For anybody listening at home, good evening. 